I want to try to help you fish grass lakes. Have you ever fished a grass lake before? I know for me that was really intimidating because a lot of times on grass lakes, everything looks the same and you really don't know where to start and where, like how, like what do you do? And I'm gonna try to show you my approach, not necessarily the best way, but this is how I can, I can, I, I have a lot of confidence in fishing grass now. Cause I've got, I've just narrowed it down to like two little things, like two little formulas that I look for to help me catch fish. I'm gonna share them with you in this video. It's always the biggest thing that you're trying to overcome. Let me stop so I can, so you can hear me. You have to stay on the motor, stay on the go. Keep moving until you find the right stuff. All right, I know what you're probably saying. What is the right stuff? That's what I'm about to show you, okay? Let's start out with something that uh, that I wouldn't fish. Right here behind me, I'm gonna show you a little area. This is a good example of some stuff that I, that I really don't, wouldn't waste much time on. You're gonna see a lot of this most of the time when you come down to a grass lake, especially one like here at Okeechobee. This is just uh, Kissimmee grass. You see there's really no breakup. There's no points, there's no, uh, it, it's, it looks like your yard. It just goes straight across. I wouldn't waste my time. You're gonna see a lot of stuff like this and don't be afraid to just drive by it. It does look good. If you're from like the East Coast where I'm from, you know, the Southeast, you see a grass line like this a lot of times you wanna fish it. But um, there's just not enough differentiation for me to start on something like this if it was in an area of interest maybe i would start flipping or throwing a chatterbait down the side of it if i saw birds diving in it maybe i would start fishing in it but the way this looks just like a green yard like that i would say it's a good rule of thumb to say you can just go past an area that looks like this let me get a little closer so you can see this i'm not really a huge fan of uh grass like this either you see how you got just like a straight wall of whatever the heck that is. I don't know, maybe some penny ward in there and some, I, I don't really know what that is. It doesn't matter. Naming the grass really doesn't do anything but just show that you know a lot of uh, biology. I, I don't know what it's called. The fact of the matter is you see where you got this straight wall and it's like a creek. I, I remember when I first came down here, when I first came to Okeechobee, I used to fish a lot of stuff like this where it was uh like creeks ran back in there and they wind back and there's this wall of grass and stuff like this it just seems like areas like this typically they just don't hold the habitat um they don't hold there's not shad there's not brim there's just not what you need to hold fish in an area like this so typically i won't i won't waste much time around anything that looks like this right here you see it's even like um see it's got like this little brushy wood stuff in it I do know there's been a few tournaments that guys have done well and stuff like that, but for the most part, I think it's a safe bet. Safe bet to say you can you can probably leave this kind of vegetation alone. I wouldn't mess with it. All right, now things are gonna get a little bit weird. If you look behind me, I like this. Let me show it to you the best I can. I like this. You see, you got a bunch of different types of vegetation together, but at the same time, this is not gonna be good either. You see, you got we call these round weeds or you've got these right here i think we call them buggy whips or the round reeds you've got some flat reeds back here you see that right there you also got pads mixed in uh you can't see it beneath me but there's even some eelgrass mixed in between this stuff this is misleading okay i, I love the vegetation here i like where it's located in proximity to the main lake and you got access to spawning grounds I, everything about it you got one problem the water is muddy here and so even though this area might be fire once it's clear but right now at this present moment it's probably not going to be any good most of the time one of the things i've learned when i'm fishing any type of grass lake is clear water is your friend you can almost not even worry about stopping until you find some clear water so the fact that the water is dirty you can see look at it i don't know if you can tell the clarity but um it is not not very good clarity maybe just a few inches i'll try to drop a bait in the water just so you can see just a few inches it's really cloudy i'm not sure if you'll be able to tell much but see how my jig just disappears just not enough clarity 
it, it, it's it's most likely just going to be unproductive water all right so this is an example of exactly what i like to fish i'll try to get close to some of this stuff so i can show you exactly what it looks like but i think you get a better idea you see how isolated this stuff is that's the key for me is finding somewhere that's isolated like this you got a few lily pads and look right now i call these lily pads it might be a different name for it. i think it's actually called spatted dock but you see how it's just one patch right there and you got a patch right here so a lot of times what that means when you see a patch here a patch there there's a difference in bottom composition think about the grass in your yard it only grows where the soil is good where there's rocky soil where there's sandy soil where there's a lot of high traffic the grass doesn't grow as well it's the same thing on a grass lake where boats run up and down i.e traffic it's going to be clean right there think about that when you're fishing a grassy lake something like where i'm at now or you may have a pond or you may have a lake that just has a lot of grass a lot of times those lanes those boat lanes where boats travel like the fish use those lanes because it's clean and it gives the fish an ambush point and there's something that's different about that boat lane than the rest of the lake but this right here most likely is harder bottom uh it could be a sandy bottom because you can see unlike the rest of the lake that we've looked at that i've showed you that i wouldn't fish this is sporadic pad here patch there and so what i can do instead of having to go like say if i was going to try to fish all the way around the edge of this stuff i don't know where to start i don't know what to really target it's hard to find an area and who's to say that you won't catch a fish doing that maybe you will but if i was to fish these lily pads now i can be a lot more concentrated and targeted around the areas that i want to fish so this is what i like to look for and it doesn't have to be pads or spatted dock it can be let's go right over here i'll show you something right over here that 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 you can fish this isolated as well all right look at that see how that's an isolated patch of reeds you got all of this all of this all of this all this area and then there's these just a patch out in the middle fish will spawn by that they'll hang out by that they use it as an ambush point there's shiners there's all kind of stuff swimming around in this bay they'll get in the middle of that and use it as an ambush point and you can pick it off imagine how long it would take me to fish every last bit of this around the edge of this backwater pond it would take forever but i can hit these pads in 20 minutes 30 minutes 10 minutes depending on the day how fast i want to fish them and know if there's fish in the area and once i have once i've identified if there's even any fish in the area what i like about grass lakes is they're very territorial so if you find an area that does have some fish in it most likely you can slow down and really exploit that area really good so if i did get bit in those pads or in that isolated patch of reeds what i would then do after i fished that really good several times over i might start punching around the edge and flipping some of that other thicker vegetation but i won't ever start on that because it's just too much to go through i got a wacky rig on down there got a little top water tied on all the baits i use i got a swim jig tied on of course a chatter bait is something that i would fish around pads like this isolated stuff i've also got a texas rig if you can see a texas rig with a um Texas rig with a stick bait on it. My baits are pretty simple. I like things that I can fish slow and pretty methodical when I'm fishing an isolated cover. It depends on also how shallow that cover is. If it's got more than two and a half, three foot on it, I would say you're better off with like a Texas rig or something that slowly soaks down beside that structure. But if it's something you can, especially when you're fishing grass lakes or any type of grass period you'd be surprised how shallow fish will get in that stuff so if it's in really shallow water let's just say knee deep or less then i'll probably use something that moves a little faster if it's three four five six seven foot deep eight foot deep i'll probably use something to get down to the base keep in mind i've said this before keep in mind a fish especially a bass feels like he's hid if his eye is covered he doesn't he's never seen his body in the mirror he doesn't know that he's got five pounds of scales hanging out the backside of his butt he doesn't realize that so if his eye is covered so just a little isolated twig if it covers his eye he feels like he's hid so remember that it's all it takes is something about half inch wide 
to make a feel a fish feel like he's hid. 